won't believe this, but scientists have now used gene editing to restore sight in mice. No, 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 let, 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 let's not get ahead of ourselves here. And the type of blindness, which is called retinous pigmentosia, is a main cause of blindness in humans also. They used CRISPR to fix a protein that is crucial for vision. And the best part is these were mice that were blind, and once this protein was fixed, the vision slowly came back until it was nearly perfect. So given enough time, these mice actually did almost as well as healthy mice in vision tests. And this breakthrough is not only just good for one thing, it's also a technique, a process, a method that might help with lots of other problems. So retinous pigmentosia is actually a group of disorders that causes gradual vision loss over time. And to some degree, it actually affects one in 4,000 people in the United States. So symptoms start with night vision problems, and then it can progress to tunnel vision, color discrimination, and eventually even complete vision loss. So gene therapy and gene editing are two different ways that you can treat a genetic disorder. So gene therapy is about adding new genes that compensate for the faulty ones. Now gene editing is probably a better path when it comes to curing this kind of blindness in humans. So because retinous pigmentosia is actually a family of problems, gene editing gives us more options. And of course, there's still challenges, especially the cost of gene therapy at this point. But if scientists can find ways to reduce costs, like maybe making money back from a Mr. Beast video, it's one option. This exact treatment is ready to start curing people with retinous pigmentosia. And how amazing would that be? Microsoft just announced another cool AI product, but this time it's a company they bought in 2020 for almost $20 billion called Nuance. And the new product called Dragon Ambient Experience, or DAX Express, uses OpenAI's GPT-4 artificial intelligent large language model technology to help doctors speed up their paperwork. It can quickly and securely make a draft of the clinical notes after each patient visit, whether that's in person or telehealth. Microsoft thinks that DAX Express and the other artificial intelligence tools that are coming out of Nuance's Dragon Medical Division will let the healthcare workers see more patients, reduce the burnout, and give better care overall. So Microsoft is full on involved when it comes to artificial intelligence in the life sciences and healthcare. Researchers have just created a new artificial intelligence that can help them predict the risk of coral rectal cancer. This artificial intelligence was trained on images of tissue that has tumors. And what it's looking for in those images is an understanding of how well the immune system is actually attacking the cancer cells. The author said that this new AI technique is faster and more accurate than a human counting the white blood cells. And having an accurate count of white blood cells gives the doctor a way to make an accurate prediction about how well the therapy will work. Researchers trained the artificial intelligence on more than 100,000 tissue images for more than 1,000 colon cancer patients. And now by looking at these images, the artificial intelligence can visually see how well the body is fighting this kind of tumor, which can be a prediction for how long you'll be relapse free. And the predictions are pretty accurate too, over 80% so far. So if you needed medical advice, do you think you'd be better off asking ChatGPT or Google? Researchers now have an answer. So it turns out that when both ChatGPT and Google were asked about a common cancer, ChatGPT actually gave answers that were very similar to Google's little snippets that you'll see in the sidebar. However, Google did provide links to its sources, whereas ChatGPT gives similar but different answers every single time you ask the question. So you can ask it repeatedly the same thing and you get slight variations, which, you know, when it comes to medical advice, might not be the best thing. But for more complex question, something longer, like is coughing a sign of lung cancer. ChatGPT was found to have much more nuanced and useful advice. The main one being at the end of most of its prompt, which is go see a doctor. When they asked about the side effects of a specific cancer drug, ChatGPT gave five different answers. And even though some were good, the others were not clear and accurate. Now Google, on the other hand, gave a link to the manufacturer's website. Now the Bing search engine has incorporated the same technology that powers ChatGPT. And in that case, if you search through their interface, you will get resources links. But the Bing search engine is also powered by the same technology that powers ChatGPT. And when you ask that large language model the same kind of questions, you do in fact get links to the source. Plus, because it's connected to the internet, it's much more reliable and up to date than ChatGPT. But at this point in history, it might be nice to get some information from tools like this, but you really should see a doctor. AI healthcare assistants will have to get much more reliable and consistent before anyone is, you know, taking their advice. Scientists are using artificial intelligence to create synthetic proteins for blood plasma. And it looks like this technique will also work on the other types of liquid that you find inside of a cell. And these artificially intelligently created substances can even have their own enhancements over the original properties. For example, the AI created synthetic blood plasma can actually maintain its biomarkers at room temperature. And it can maintain that without refrigeration, which is very different from its pathetic real blood counterpart. In another experiment, scientists made a solution with fake polymers to mimic 
cytosol, which is the liquid inside of a cell. And then when ribosomes were added, they functioned normally, producing proteins as if they were inside of a real cell. What? Incredibly, this artificial intelligence learned to map the protein structure to their function. And then it could design a new material with those specific properties. The system even went a step further and created proteins that were so different, the body didn't even recognize them as proteins, but they had that same functionality. And who knows what kind of things a tool like this will give us in the future. It could be polymers that degrade naturally. There could be a way to enhance photosynthesis, getting more energy from the sun in a biological way. Or maybe we'll even create super blood that will make people feel healthier than ever. But what scientists have created today is like Beyond Meat for vampires. Do you get it? I want to go on a date. I'm lonely. I understand. You want baloney. <sighs> A six-month pilot program is using artificial intelligence to help prevent falls no! among memory care residents. The technology called Augie is a cognitive resident care assistant that acts like a second pair of eyes at at-risk apartments. And this artificial intelligent vision system gives caregivers both a prediction of when someone might fall and helps them respond really quickly when somebody does fall. Augie is a wall-mounted sensor system that uses machine vision. It can detect sleep patterns and mobility issues. So far, the care facility that's using it calls the technology indispensable. They find it helpful that it gives them a real-time vision of the entire care center into each person's apartment. Researchers have just found a new way to inject proteins into a specific cell. They're using a bacterial nano syringe that's targeting human cells. Now, the logic is that if you put these molecules into a pill, they certainly can easily slip into the cells, but they have a lot of unwanted side effects. The problem is they're not specific. They're too general. Now, on the other hand, a big molecule like a protein can't get into the cell in the first place, even though once it is, it's much more targeted. But nature already has a solution for this. Bacteria already have something called a nano syringe. And what that does is binds to the cell, pulls the membrane apart, and allows bigger proteins to be injected into the cell. And now researchers from MIT have adapted a nano syringe so it can actually target a human cell. And then they use the cutting edge software that came from Google and DeepMind called AlphaFold to predict the structure of what a human-based nano syringe should look like and how to get it to bind to a specific protein called EGFR. And now these nano syringes for humans exist. They've successfully targeted human cells with the EGFR protein protein. And when loaded with a toxin that did exactly what they hoped it would do, it targeted and killed all of the types of cells that have the EGFR protein and left the rest of them unharmed. So this shows that this new technology, this nano syringes can target a specific type of cell. And in the near future, that could include cancer cells. So there's this cool new thing called the F3DB, and it might just change the way that we do surgery and treat cancer. It's actually a tiny little 3D bioprinter that should work from inside of the body. And it prints using a special material called a bio ink to help fix our organs. Now normally bioprinting has to be something that happens outside of the body. And then you have to surgically take it and put it inside the body where it's needed. But that means you need time to recover, there could be a risk of loss of blood or infection. So the F3DB could be a game changer. Because once it's installed, it can do all of its own printing inside of your body. So no more invasive surgeries needed. So imagine we just install that tiny little biological robot factory right into our heart and then and it just prints out whatever our body needs. Having a little factory like that just in your heart, printing out whatever you need, what could go wrong?